Hi, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. Unfortunately, I've had a lots of problems with the technology this week, but I'll do the best that I can. So, please bear with me. Now, I think the first thing to point out is that there are some big changes on the way in the weather as we head through the coming days. So, uh, let's see what they could mean. Now, here's a picture at 18 GMT on Wednesday the 21st. There are a few heavy showers in the south, but it's mainly dry elsewhere. And that continues to be the case in the short term, dry conditions across the UK. But what's approaching? Well, it's a bank holiday weekend, and that means the Atlantic is coming back. Finally, a change is taking place. It's becoming much more changeable or unsettled. Showers, longer spells of rain, and strong winds are possible in all parts of the UK. And that continues to be the case as we head through the first part of next week. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature uh, sequence. It helps to explain what's taking place. A mottled shaded area indicates the track of the jet and you can see it's moving to the south of the UK. That's, so we're on its cool northern side and areas of low pressure are nearby. Well, what does all that mean in terms of the details down at the surface? What weather can we actually expect as we go through the coming days? Here are some charts from the Met Office UKV model, which help illustrate the possibilities. Forecast maximum temperatures on the left for Thursday the 22nd. On the right, it's sunshine, cloud and precipitation. Just one or two showers you can see in the south, so mainly dry elsewhere with sunny periods. At temperatures up to about 21 degrees in the southwest. It's cooler as you head northwards and eastwards. Thursday, dry again in much of the United Kingdom, but if you sit, look to the northwest, you'll see there is a band of rain moving into Northern Ireland, bringing wetter conditions there as we go through the afternoon and later on into parts of northwestern Britain as well. It's worth noting though, temperatures are quite respectable across England and Wales, 21, 22 degrees, pleasantly warm in the sunshine, even in the north, not too bad. Unfortunately though, the bank holiday weekend arrives and the weather changes. You can see a band of rain clears eastwards and then it's quite a mixed picture with further showery spells of rain, particularly in the north and the west. Some of those could be very heavy indeed. Temperatures, well, if the sun pops out, not too bad, up to about 20 degrees in central and eastern counties of England, even eastern Scotland there, pleasantly warm if there is some sunshine. It's generally cooler in the west, but temperatures aren't the big problem. It's the cloud and the potential for rain or heavy showers. Sunday, some bright spells in southern and central regions with scattered showers, but in the north, those showers heavy and prolonged. It could be very windy as well, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Temperatures 21, 22 degrees in central and eastern counties of England, so pleasantly warm. Much cooler, though, as you head northward. Single figures there in Scotland. Some, uh, Bank holiday Monday and Tuesday. Uh, overview charts from the GFS model, because the UKV doesn't go this far ahead are painting quite a showery or wet picture, temperatures close to or maybe even a little bit below the average in places. It's worth noting though that the GFS has a tendency to over forecast rain and under forecast temperatures. So these are just given a general idea of the mixed theme. I mentioned the potential for strong winds and the charts here are also from the UKV model. They show forecast wind gusts for one on the left does, one on the right shows Surface pressure, it's, I'm using it to illustrate how closely packed the isobars are because we've got an area of low pressure on Sunday afternoon centre close to northeastern Scotland. Hence, there could be severe gales there. You can see gusts of 60 to 70 miles an hour in the uh, central parts of Scotland. Even in southern England, actually, gusts of around 40 to 50 miles an hour mean that it's not going to be particularly pleasant to be sitting outside in those beer gardens if this is close to mark but i do want to emphasize that it's several days away the details will be changed the strongest winds could arrive earlier or later the low pressure may not develop as is being forecast by this model but the potential is there at least for some 
quite showery and windy conditions at times as we go through the bank holiday weekend and the latter part of the first week. Forecast rain totals here from the GFS and ECM models for the first five days. Wettest in the northwest of the United Kingdom, according to both of these. Amounts of rain actually in central and eastern counties still not great, especially if the ECM model is correct, although they are varying a little bit, but single figures in millimetres for quite a few places according to that model. Wetter though, according to the GFS. Now moving forward to the 10-day charts, the totals have increased substantially in the north and the west. The wettest conditions in the west of Scotland there, the orange shade and indicating over 100 millimetres on both, uh, both models. And some fairly substantial totals in northwestern England, Wales and Northern Ireland too, but still not so much rain in central, eastern and south eastern counties of England. And that's because the weather is coming in from the west. It's difficult, I think, to read too much into these beyond that because even in central and southeastern England, it's quite possible hefty showers could come along at times. And in some places, the totals could be higher than are being forecast here. So some welcome rain for all counties, I think. Do the deterministic models in general terms all show a similar picture as we head towards the end of the first week? Let's see. This is the GFS on Wednesday the 28th. It has a small area of low pressure pushing southeastwards across the UK, bringing showers and longer spells of rain, a wet picture here. There is a ridge of high pressure starting to build in from the west behind it. The Canadian model has that area of low pressure a little bit further north, but all in all, it's a changeable or unsettled theme. The German icon also looks very mixed, but the European ECM is significantly different. High pressure from the Azores is building northeastwards into continental Europe, and it's having quite a say on the weather in southern and central parts of the United Kingdom. The more mixed conditions are restricted here to the northwest. The artificial intelligence version of the same model, though, indicates a more changeable theme in, in all areas, with high pressure being weaker and further south. Finally, the UK Met Office Global. This has high pressure building across southern and central regions, with the changeable theme in the north. So there is quite a lot of discrepancy between the models. I think what we can say is that in the north, it's likely to be changeable. So showers or long spells of rain, temperatures close to the average. In the south, there could well be some wet periods, but there is a greater chance of it being more settled and warmer at times. So does that continue to be the case as we head through the second week? Of course, at this range, it's just about the general trends and probabilities. I'll start as usual with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top half. The signal is quite clear. It's above average. You can see the thick purple line. The ensemble mean stays above the thick black line, the 30-year norm. And there are a number of runs which are bringing in a very warm air indeed. I think that is something we need to keep an eye on. There is a possibility of some plume type patterns on a number of the individual perturbations in the ensemble, which suggest, as I say, that it could turn up very warm or even hot on some days. In terms of rain, though, the number of rain spikes across the bottom part of the plot varies, so there are some dry periods, but I think the risk of rain is ongoing. All in all, though, probably a reasonable amount of dry weather in this part of the UK. The two metre temperature data tables are showing that it could well be quite warm or very warm at times, as I've been indicating. A number of runs there falling into the red category, which is the 26 to 30 Celsius bracket, 23% at the end there, a little bit lower earlier on. Quite a lot of the 21 to 25 as well. So I don't think temperatures are going to be a big factor in terms of, of it being cool. It's just a question of will it stay settled enough for very warm periods to develop. The overnight lows there, mostly between 11 and 15. 
up to Manchester to see the upper air temperature profile and it's quite similar there to the London chart. In terms of rain, well, there are more spikes showing up on the lower part of the plot, so a little bit wetter, hence that fits in with the idea that the weather's going to be coming in from the west, at least here. The two metre temperature data tables, similar trends to the ones on the London uh, plot, slightly cooler, but not that much cooler, actually, is what they suggest, although you would, you would expect the maximums here to be a little bit lower anyway as, as you head northwards. Finally up to Glasgow to continue the journey. Here the 850 HPA temperatures are slightly above the average for much of the second week but not a great deal above it. So the anomaly here is less than it was on the Manchester and London graphs. The number of rain spikes along the bottom is probably a little bit greater than on the Manchester graph which was greater than the London one. So wettest in the northwest. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow probably trending upwards as we go towards the end of the second week at least through the days. The night's actually staying quite chilly still a possibility at least early on of ground frost although later the light green becomes strongly dominant those are runs which are going for minimums of between 6 and 10 degrees. The mean surface level pressure data table for York suggests that early on it's quite mixed. Pressure's probably close to the average, but you can see as we head through the second week a little bit, the orange returns. Those are runs which are strongly dominated by high pressure. And the amount of yellow probably increases a little bit. Most of those runs are close to or above average pressure forecasts for the time of the year. So the suggestion I think here is that as we go through the second week, the chance of drier and more settled periods starts to increase. The GEFS mean surface level pressure snapshot chart for Saturday the 31st of May also has high pressure beginning to build up from the southwest and continental Europe. So a good chance of dry periods in the seven half UK more mixed in the north. And the ECM ensemble plot also shows something similar with high pressure perhaps actually building more from the continent and that would lend itself to a more favourable setup for very warm or even hot periods to develop. So there is quite a lot taking place through the next two weeks but I'll try and summarise it. Week one, it starts mostly dry, but then it turns unsettled. The long dry period comes to an end. All parts of the UK can expect showers or long periods of rain, but the wettest conditions will be focused on the west and particularly the northwest. It also turns windy at times, possibly very windy in Scotland and maybe more widely across the northern half of the United Kingdom. Week two, it's a mixed start with the driest conditions probably in the south and the east. But as we head through the week, the chance of dry periods increases. Temperatures are also likely to rise at times and there is a chance of it becoming a very warm or even hot in southern and central areas. So there we have it. It's it's a very mixed outlook, becoming changeable or unsettled for a period, but there are some indications of drier conditions returning later and also it may start to turn very warm or even hot in southern and central parts of Britain. Well, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. Once again, I apologise for the limited technical resources which were working today. So you can't see me in full. Nonetheless, I hope the data itself is still valid and useful. Don't forget, if you did find that to be the case, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Of course, stay up to date with the day to day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.